wherever we look in manufacturing industry, we can see examples of engineering products which require components to be made and measured to the highest standards of accuracy, and where interchangeability of components is necessary. Its success depends on the correct functioning of many thousands of components, some of them made to very high standards of accuracy. Precision components made in different places have to fit together and perform in a predictable way. No matter how complex the component, tolerances will have to be given to each critical dimension. The multi-gauge inspection fixture using electronic probes is used to check all the critical dimensions automatically. The gauging fixture checks that dimensions are within tolerance. This piece of equipment can be measured to an order of accuracy one magnitude higher than that required to manufacture the gauge. The operator must be confident that his instruments give the same readings as instruments in the other company's gauge room. All these instruments are calibrated with gauge blocks. These gauge blocks are made with such precision that they can be rung together to make up any combination of size. They are held together by molecular force. We're on our way to the nation's standard room at the National Physical Laboratory in Teddington. All factory master gauges must be traceable to NPL. That way we can ensure that measurements made by different companies are all the same. Well, this is the National Standards Room. Gauges arrive here from all over the country. This time, however, it's not a case of comparing one gauge against another gauge. Any master made from steel or any other material may change its length through aging, wear, or even accidental damage. The metrologist needs a material which can't be mistreated. And here it is. Light. Dr. Ken Poulter is head of engineering metrology at NPL. Light is a natural standard ideal for the metrologist as it can be reproduced at any time in laboratories all over the world. In fact, by adopting light as a standard, length can now be related to another primary quantity, time. In October 1983, a new definition of the meter was internationally agreed at a meeting in Paris. The meter is now defined as the distance traveled by light in just over one three hundred millionth of a second. Imagine a laser which gives out a pulse of light for one three hundred millionth of a second. The beam of light would be one meter long. Such short time intervals are very difficult to measure accurately. So laser wavelengths are used for the measurement of length in the laboratory. The new definition of the meter does not specify any particular wavelength but it does give an exact value for the velocity of light. Since the wavelength of any wave motion, including light, is related to the frequency of the source by the very simple equation velocity equals wavelength times frequency, it follows that the wavelength of the light from a laser is accurately known if its frequency has been carefully measured. Measurements at national standards laboratories throughout the world have determined the frequency and therefore the wavelength of several different types of laser. The wavelength of this laser, for instance, has been shown to differ by less than one part in 10,000 million from the wavelengths of similar lasers in other countries. Well, let's now turn to the calibration of those gauge blocks. Behind me is an interferometer. This instrument enables us to measure the length of each of these gauge blocks using the natural standard of light that we have just talked about. For a source, it uses a laser stabilized to operate at one of the recommended frequencies. In fact, for this interferometer, the laser is in another laboratory and the light is brought here along an optical fiber. To understand how this instrument works, we must first learn how two light waves can interact with each other to produce interference fringes.
Let's see what happens when two plane light waves meet each other. If the waves are traveling exactly in phase, they reinforce each other so that the amplitude of vibration and therefore the intensity is greater than for one wave alone. This produces a bright interference fringe. If one wave is half a wavelength out of phase with the other, they cancel out and no light is detected. A dark fringe is produced. These interference fringes form a scale on which one division represents half a wavelength of the illuminating light. On this new gauge block interferometer, interference fringes are produced when light reflected from the gauge block and from the base plate interferes with the light reflected from a fully reflecting reference mirror. The fringe pattern is recorded by a television camera and a microcomputer measures the positions of the fringes on the gauge block relative to those on the base plate. Measurements made at several wavelengths are combined by the computer to calculate the gauge length. For measurement and calibration of larger gauges, a laser is particularly convenient as it produces an intense collimated beam of light which can generate interference fringes over distances of many meters. End standards up to one meter in length are measured automatically in this interferometer. Interference fringes are counted electronically as the carriage moves along the bed of the machine. One fringe is counted each time the carriage moves by one quarter of a wavelength. That's about 0.15 of a micrometer. To make measurements in more than one dimension, laser interferometers can be added to the axis of a coordinate measuring machine. The machine gives an accurate calibration with a directly traceable standard, the laser wavelength. Well, this is what we came for, an NPL calibration certificate. Traceability where NPL maintain the national standard and calibrate companies' master gauges. Each company uses these masters to calibrate their own factory's calibration room gauges. These, in turn, are used to calibrate the tool room gauges. The tool room gauges check the shop floor gauges, which control the machine tool accuracy. Because NPL couldn't cope with the Herculean task of calibrating every master gauge in the country, Independent laboratories are accredited to do some of this work. So often there is an extra link in the chain. NAMAS accredited laboratories are all directly traceable to NPL. Whatever the calibration, however big or small the job, NPL, as the nation's standards room, ensures that measurements made at various times in a number of places are compatible so that the rod will fit into the hole even if they are made in different factories or even in different countries. In this way, complex, multi-component or even multinational projects can be guaranteed by accurate, traceable metrology. Metrology that is traceable to the universal standard, light. <laughs>